Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about graphing linear inequalities. So not just graphing lines, but these linear statements where we have a less than or a greater than involved in some way. So in our first example, if we're trying to work from a slope intercept form, what we'll need to do first is solve this for y, right? That means get the y by itself. So we'll need to subtract the 4x term entirely over to the other side as our first step. And that will give us that 5y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 40. The last thing to do to get y completely by itself would be to divide everything by 5, and so we would get that y is greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths x plus 8. Remember this is mx plus b, our m is negative 4 fifths, and our b is positive 8. Now let's just think about the equal part of this. We'll come back and worry about the greater than part later. So if we were just graphing y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 8, remember we start at the intercept and then we use the slope to get another point. So if I start at a y-intercept of positive 8, then I would plot my y-intercept of 8 there. And using my slope, negative 4 over 5, so this negative 4 being the rise of my slope tells me that I need to go down 4, and then this 5 on the bottom tells me that I'll go to the right 5. So I need to go down 4 and right 5 to get another point on my line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would give us our second point here. So we'll just go ahead and graph the line part of this inequality. So that's the equal to part. Now the greater than part is actually going to give us that everything on one side of the line or the other is also going to be an answer. So not only is everything on this line a solution, but everything on one side or the other. And if you think about when y is greater than something, that would mean a bigger y value would be above something, right? So if I pick any point on the line and I go above it, I'm going to be on this side of the line. So actually anything above the line as well in my xy plane is going to be a solution for this. So this would be our graphed solution for the inequality 4x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 40. Let's do another one of these by slope intercept. So 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 18. So first thing we'll need to get the y by itself. We'll subtract 2x from both sides. That will give us 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 18. Once I'm here, I need to divide by the 3 that's still in front of y. So dividing by 3, I would get that y is less than or equal to negative 2 over 3x plus, now 18 divided by 3 is actually a whole number, so we're going to go ahead and say 6 there. So we get y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 6. So our m now is negative 2 thirds, that's our slope, and our b is positive 6, that's our y-intercept. So remember we first use our y-intercept, we go up 6, and we plot that point, so we've used our b. Now we use our m our slope to get another point. So this says my rise is negative 2, so I'll go down 2, and then I will go right 3 to get another point. So from my intercept here, if I go down 2 and I go over 3, then I have a point right here at 3 comma 4. Now we have our two points, so we can go ahead and sketch our line. So if I sketch my line through those points, then I get something that looks like this. And now we go back to the inequality part of this, the less than part, and we say, okay, why less than? Well, if y is less than something, that would be smaller y values, which would be below the line. So in this case, we would shade everything a bigger region this time, right? Everything below the line in our xy plane would also be a solution. So everything on the line and everything below the line is an answer for this inequality here. Let's shift modes and go now to graphing by intercepts. So instead of solving for y and getting it in mx plus b form, let's go ahead and use intercepts, which is when the other variable is zero, when y is zero. That's going to make this y term disappear, and we'll get 6x is less than or equal to 30, but let's just think of the equal to part. So 6x equal to 30 is going to give us that x is 5. And so that point, if I have x equals 5 and y equals 0, would be 5 comma 0. And if we look for the y-intercept, 
then that x term up there is going to zero out and we'll get 5y is think of this as equal to 30 dividing by 5 on both sides will give you that y is 6 and so if y is 6 and x is 0 then that's 0 comma 6 so an x-intercept of 5 we would plot that a y-intercept of 6 we would plot that and now that we have our two points we can simply go ahead and sketch our line through those points and in this case, the less than is telling us that we would shade below the line. Okay, so notice we are not in y equals mx plus b form, but in this example, we're still able to use that less than means below the line. And the reason we're able to do that is because the coefficient, the number in front of our y is positive. This is a positive five y. We want to do this example again using intercepts and not converting to mx plus b form, but looking at it where we have a negative coefficient for y. So 6x minus 5y is less than or equal to 30. I'm going to actually work this problem out both ways so that you can see how to tell whether to shade above or below our line with this less than here when we have a negative coefficient in front of y. Let's go ahead and find our intercepts first. So if I want to find the x-intercept, and I'm going with that method first, that would be when y is 0. So if y is 0, that term's going to 0 out. We'll have 6x equal to 30. And so x is going to be 5, just like the last one. So we have x is equal to 5. That's 5 comma 0 then for our intercept. Our y-intercept that will be when x equals 0. So if I plug in 0 for x, notice we have a negative 5y, so dividing both sides by negative 5 will actually give us negative 6 for our y-intercept. So this would be the point 0 comma negative 6. And what we would do is we would then plot the points, so 5, 0, and here we're plotting 0, negative 6, so down 6 on the y-axis. And we might be tempted to say, well, the less than means I shade below the line once I draw my line, right? And we would actually be mistaken if we said that. And the reason that we would be mistaken, let's go ahead and get this in mx plus b form, and you'll see why this happens. So if I have 6x minus 5y is less than or equal to 30, and I first subtract 6x from both sides, so that would give me negative 5y is less than or equal to negative 6x plus 30. And now dividing by negative 5, so I would get y, I would get dividing by negative 5, a negative divided by a negative, I would get positive 6 over 5 here. And then dividing 30 by negative 5, I would get negative 6. But the thing to remember if you've solved linear inequalities is when you divide by a negative and you have a linear inequality, that direction of inequality actually changes to the other direction. So this would actually become greater than equal when we divide by negative 5. Okay, so in our last example, we had a positive 5 here. If we had done this and gotten in slope-intercept form, we wouldn't have divided by a negative, so our direction of inequality was okay. But in this case, where you have a negative coefficient in front of the y, think about if you're going to use the intercept version of how to do these and plot these and figure out which direction, you want to think about, do I have a negative coefficient of y? Because that's going to give me the opposite direction here. So we look at this, and you may first see this and go, oh, I'm going to be shading below. But the details tell us, because this is a negative 5 in front of the y, we would actually be shading above. So we will actually be shading above this line. So it is this side of the line over here that actually gives us the rest of our solution. So something to note, going back to our last one real quick here. So you can see in our last one, we had a less than and we had a positive coefficient for y. Less than was below in this case. It was exactly what you think. When you have a negative coefficient for your y, then this direction is going to be opposite what you see and we will graph greater than that line when we have x and a y. So let's go off that intuition and just do this one strictly by intercepts now that we know that little extra piece there. So let's find our x-intercept first. That will be when y is 0 and the other variable is 0. So my y term will go away. Think of just the equal. So we have 3x equal to 18 and divide by 3 on both sides. That will give you that x is 6. So we have an intercept of 6 comma 0. 
and then our y intercept which is going to be when the other variable x is 0. So this term would 0 out, the 3x goes away. We have negative 9y equals 18. Dividing by negative 9 on both sides would give us that y is equal to negative 2. And so we would get 0 comma negative 2 as our other intercepts. So let's plot those. We have 6 comma 0 so on my x-axis there, and 0 negative 2 on my y-axis down here. And now I will plot my line. And once I have plotted my line, I now need to decide above or below. So go ahead and take a look here. We have greater than, which would normally mean shade above, but the y coefficient is negative. So that means we will be shading the opposite of what this says. So we won't be shading above, we'll actually be shading below because our y coefficient is negative nine. If that were a positive nine, then we would be shading above. We want to go ahead and talk you through some single variable linear inequalities and graphing those as well. So if we have x greater than equal to 3, just think about the equal to part first. If x is equal to 3, could we graph that line? We should be able to. What you don't want to do, you want to avoid the trap of x is the horizontal axis, so this must be a horizontal line. Remember this is actually saying, because there's only one variable in this linear equation, that this crosses the x-axis. And where does it cross it? Well, it crosses it at the value of 3. And if I cross through the x-axis, that makes me a vertical line, right? So we would go ahead and draw our line like that. And now the question is, which way do I shade? There's not really an above or below in this case, right? So think about in terms of x. If we have x values that are greater than something, where are x values greater? Well, they're greater as we move to the right. So that means in this case of x greater than equal to, we would actually have our solution being everything additionally on the right side of the line. If we had x less than equal to 3, then we would shade the lesser x values, which are to the left. Looking here, we also could graph a compound inequality. So we have uh, two statements really here. We have zero less than equal to y, less than equal to five. So there are really two lines hidden in this one statement here. So this part over here, if we ignore the inequality for now, really says zero equal to y. And this part over here actually says y equal to five. So what we'll need to do is graph both of these. So if I'm y equals 0, y equals 5, that means my lines cross the y-axis, which means they're horizontal lines. So if I cross the y-axis at 0, which is this first one, right, then that is actually the x-axis. And if I cross the y-axis at 5, positive 5, then I would be up 5 units from that other line there, and we would get something like that, right? So now the question is, what's up with the inequalities? Well, you can tell the big side is toward y here, so that means I should be bigger than the values of 0. I should be y values above 0. And here if you look at this part of the compound inequality, you'll notice that the small side is toward y, so that means I should be shading values that are smaller. If we draw little arrows indicating direction here, we're actually going to be shading everything between these two regions. And that would be our graph for this linear inequality, 0 less than equal to y less than equal to 5. Okay, everyone, hopefully you have a better idea of how to graph your linear inequalities now moving forward. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.